What is a deadlock in C-sharp? A deadlock in C-sharp is a situation where two or more threads are blocked forever and they are waiting for each other to release a resource that they need to continue their execution. And if you ever want to build a solid, robust, multi-threaded application in C-sharp, you need to understand deadlocks and how to prevent them. And before we continue, I just want to say that the deadlocks are not specific to C-sharp. They are a general issue in concurrent programming, which can happen in any multi-threaded environment. So here's a very simple demonstration of, of a deadlock when we have only two threads. We have thread A and thread B. Thread A is currently holding the resource 1 and thread B is holding the resource 2. Now, in order to continue, thread A is going to need resource 2. However, thread B is currently holding this resource and is not releasing it since thread B is actually waiting for resource 1. So, for thread B to continue, it actually needs resource 1. However, our thread A holds resource 1 and is waiting for resource 2 to become available in order to release the resource 1. So this is our deadlock. Neither of these threads can continue since each one of them is holding a resource that the other one needs. Let's take a look at my first code example where we demonstrate how a deadlock can happen in your program. So I have a class which is called count with a balance property, which is a decimal. And this is our deadlock class example. Inside, I have two static account A and account B accounts. Uh, this is my main method. But first, let's take a look at the methods which transfer money from A to B and from B to A. This is our transfer from A to B. So it makes sense to lock account A when we are transferring money from A to B. And also lock account B in order to proceed with a transfer. What we do, we decrease the account A balance since we are transferring from A to B, and then we increase the account B balance since we are transferring to account B. And then we print to the console transfer from A to B. Now the second method transfer from B to A, uh, it is pretty much the same. It just happens in reverse. We lock account B, and then we lock account A as well, and then we decrease the balance of account B and increase the balance of the account A and we print to the console transfer from B to A. Now, in order to demonstrate the program working properly, let's just remove the thread sleep. But first, actually, I can just command out this line. So let's make sure that the, sorry, this line here, we're just going to run the first thread and we're going to transfer them from A to B just to make sure that the program works. So let's run it and we see it transferred from A to B and I'm going to do the same with the other method, with the other thread. We run it and we see transferred from B to A. So everything works properly. Now let's try to run both threads. The first one transfers from A to B, the second one from B to A. Let's run the program. You can see we transfer from B to A and from A to B. From A to B, from B to A. So the order of these threads is not guaranteed. It can happen that this one runs first and then this one after that, or this one runs second and this one first. It doesn't really matter. Now let's introduce the sleep, which is going to demonstrate the deadlock. So we are going to add sleep of 100 milliseconds. Now let's run the program and see what happens. Well, nothing is printed on the screen. Why? Because there is a deadlock. Now let's take a look at the code and see why this happens. So why did we get a deadlock after we added this line here? The thread sleep 100 milliseconds and the thread sleep 100 milliseconds here. Okay, this actually simulates a long running operation. Let's say you make a call to the database, or you call some API or do some 
complex calculations and this takes time. So what is going to happen? We give, okay, this, this actually, this uh, long running operation is going to give the other thread a chance of acquiring their lock. So basically the first thread is going to acquire, is going to lock account A and the second one is going to lock account B. So when this thread proceeds, it is going to try to get hold of account B in order to lock it, but it cannot. Why? Because the second thread is already holding a lock to account B. So this is our scenario that I tried to describe earlier. Basically, we have two threads and each one of them is holding a resource that the other one needs in order to proceed. So this one here has locked account A, which the second one needs in order to proceed. And this one here holds a lock for account B, which our first thread needs to get hold of in order to proceed. It is quite important to understand that you can have scenarios where this program runs over and over without any issues. Like I can try to demonstrate by changing the sleep value to zero milliseconds here and one milliseconds here. So if I run this program over and over, it is going to execute just fine. And then at some point, this deadlock is going to happen. This means that in real life scenarios, your program can run for days or months or weeks without any issues. And then a deadlock can happen. And it is actually quite difficult to debug your code and find a reason why your program does not work properly occasionally. So let's try to run the program and see if I can show you that this program is going to run several times without any problems. And then sometimes it's going to be deadlocked. Okay, we have a deadlock now. You see the program execute just fine. Execute just fine. And we have a deadlock again. So this can happen in real life. And this is why the deadlocks are so difficult to uh, trace. So you need to be very careful when you create a multi-thread application. And now let's see how we can modify the code in order to prevent the deadlocks and make sure that the program executes properly every single time. To do that, I have updated the account class. I have added a second property, which is the public ID, which is an integer. You can see how we create our objects here. We pass the ID for each one of the accounts. We have an ID of one and ID of two. And then instead of two methods, I'm using a single method, which is called transfer. And it takes two accounts and the decimal amount as the parameters. The first one is the from account and the second one is the to account. Now inside our method, we actually make sure that all the threads acquire the locks in the exact same order. In order to do that, we assign the first lock account the account with the smallest ID and the second lock is the account with the bigger ID. This means that no matter which thread executes this method, the order of acquiring the locks is going to be the same for every single thread. This means that if thread A gets the first lock and then we have another thread which runs and tries to get the same first lock, it is not going to succeed. This means that it's going to wait until the first thread is finished and then it is going to acquire the first lock and it is going to perform the exact same operations. And we can now run the program to make sure that it works every single time. And we can run it again and one more time. And as you can see, the program always works. Ensuring that all threads acquire locks in the same order is only one of the ways to try to prevent deadlocks. The other ways are using timeout mechanisms while waiting for a lock in order to detect and recover from potential deadlocks and also designing the application threading architecture to minimize the need for multiple locks or to avoid locking entirely. And the last one is obviously using concurrent collections, which can also help. And this was another quick tutorial from me, which tried to explain what the deadlocks are in C-sharp and how we can prevent them. And once you start working with 
multi-threaded applications, you might want to learn more about the locks and monitors and mutex and semaphores, which are the synchronization primitives in C-sharp, and they're used to make sure that only one thread can access a particular resource at a time. And also you need to make sure to use them carefully in order to prevent that deadlocks. Thank you for watching.